Within this video, we're gonna go ahead and cover how to use the pathing tools inside of Twin Motion. So to get to these pathing tools, you can actually find them down here in the ribbon, right here under this little icon, and they're right here under paths. Now we've got four different kinds of paths, character, vehicle, bicycle, and custom path. And we're gonna go ahead and cover each one of these in turn. So for character path, we'll just go ahead and click here as we get our little people to walk around. And it's important to remember that you do need to click on this little button right here first before you do anything. Otherwise, you're not going to be able to create a path. So go ahead and click that. And now I can go ahead and drop down these little circles. And as I click once, twice, three times, you'll notice that I'm starting to actually create a path. Now, if I come all the way around and stop right on top of that first one, it'll actually create a closed loop, which is awesome. So go ahead and just give it a click. And now I have my characters that just walk around. So let's go ahead and zoom in on these. And give a chance to kind of see what we're working with here. Now, I can add more points if I click on the little plus spot right here. And I can go ahead and move these if I move these around too. So this will add and move some of these around. And now something to note about the path is even if I lift it up off of the ground, the characters are still going to like stick to the ground, which is a good thing to know. So I'll go ahead and undo that a few times. All right, so we can do this type multi over here. We have all of our different ethnicities that we can add in uh, according to what's inside of Twin Motion. Uh, we can change what street clothes, office clothes, travel clothes, beach clothes, any of the ones we want here. Uh, the width of the path, which is very helpful here, and the density, how many people we actually want to be walking around on this. Uh, the higher they are, the more it's going to actually kind of lag out. Uh, so just be aware of that one. And we can also reverse this, so they're going the other direction. And if we want them to be kind of in a line, but not actually be walking, we can go ahead and just stop them here too. So maybe they're just waiting in line for tickets. Who knows what it is, right? So that's our character path. Now, before we move on to the next actual path, let's talk about this path specifically. Now, we had mentioned earlier that we can go ahead and just click on these and we can move these around. But what if I want to move the entire path from one place to another? Well, that's actually pretty easy to do. We can come over here inside of the scene graph. And if I go ahead and just click on all and change this filter to paths, we can find just the path here. So I can click the entire path and actually just move this around. Now to delete the entire thing, come over here, select this one, right? And then delete it. But I can also come in here and just grab these and just delete these specific points on the path too. So that's also very helpful. So let's go ahead and just delete this one and get it out of here. Go back into our paths. And next we'll go ahead and talk about the vehicle path. Now the vehicle path is very similar to the one that we just played with. There's just a few little extra pieces. So I'll go ahead and click on this and this is gonna be a little bit awkward, but we're gonna go and put vehicles around here. Make sure we click our little add button here and go ahead and click once, twice, three, four, go all the way around. Let's go ahead and just create an entire loop again. Now in this case, we actually have a lane count over here on the far left. So if we want to have multiple lanes of cars, we can do that. Now you'll notice that some of our characters here are T-posing. Uh, that's fine. If you close to in motion, open it back up, it'll be fine. It won't be that big of a deal. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and knock the lane mode down to one and let's set our lanes to um, two lanes. So now we get opposite directions, which is awesome. Uh, we can offset our lanes too, so they're a little bit further away from each other. Now you'll notice that over here on the side, they don't recognize collision, so don't expect them to do that. Um, again, density, just like before, add or lower any of them, um, uh, the amount that we have. And then our speed will actually make these move faster or slower. So something to kind of think about that. Now we have a right hand traffic rule over here. And if we actually turn our lane count up, and we can actually change this to being right-handed or left-handed, which is awesome. And of course, the left, the last piece that we have over here is a reverse, and we can make them go the opposite direction. So there are our actual vehicles. Next one up, we have are the bicycle paths. So again, click on our bicycle path, go ahead and grab our little add button here, and we'll go ahead and create another loop. Goes all the way around, like so. Now, this one is very similar to the one we just had. Uh, we do actually have a two lanes here, which is awesome. So we can actually turn that up. So we've got these going opposite directions. It looks like I got the lane piece actually up here in the sky. Hmm, good times. I'll go ahead and just leave that as it is. Um, we can offset our lanes so these people aren't going to look like they're going to run into each other. Density, of course, and our speed. So we can make these go really, really fast as they go around. And of course, we can reverse the direction as well. And that's it for the bicycle path. It's actually pretty simple. The last piece that we're gonna talk about is the custom path. Now, this one's a lot of fun to play with, so I highly suggest getting in there and experimenting with it. And to kind of show this off, I'm actually gonna turn the camera around because I've got a little lake area here, and we'll set up the camera so we can see most of the lake. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and use this custom path. Go ahead and grab our little ad here, and let's go ahead and just set this up, and we're gonna go ahead and add in a boat for this one. 
Nice. And you'll notice that we have a little cube that's going around. And that is our little option right here. We can actually change this out. So if I click on the little ellipses here, I can go to the library. And let's actually back this up. And let's go into our vehicles. All the way back up. Here we go. Vehicles here. And we're going to go into the boats. And I'll go ahead and just grab this inflatable boat. And I'm going to go ahead and just drag it down on top. You'll notice the boat starts to move around. Now, one of the things that you may have noticed is that we don't have a driver in our boat and we want to go ahead and add that in. Now, you may think that if we come over here to the custom path, we can start adding things in here, and it, unfortunately, that doesn't quite work. So instead, we're going to go ahead and just kind of build one right here. So let's go ahead and grab our inflatable boat. I'll drop that in right there, and then I'm going to go back to our characters and go into our posed humans, and there's one in particular that I want to grab because she looks like she's actually driving. Um, it's further down. She's basically sitting at a desk. Here we go, Diana. So let's go ahead and grab Diana and bring her in here. I'm going to go ahead and zoom in on her, and let's go ahead and rotate around. So she looks like she's at a desk having some fun. What I'm going to do is just kind of rotate her and then set her into place. And making sure that I'm checking her from all angles here, because otherwise I could turn this could turn into a really awkward situation here. I'm going to grab her or not. She doesn't want to be moved right now. All right. There we go. So if I can select her, that's very odd. Now I can't actually get a hold of her for some reason entertaining all right so let's go ahead and use this let's go and turn the paths off go to all and if i go to the very bottom there we go so now i can select her this way and i'm going to drag her actually onto this boat like so now i can move her independently which is nice get her into position maybe i want to add in a stool too now what i want to do is i'm going to take this inflatable boat as it is right here with diana diana attached to it and i'm going to right click on it and what i'm going to say is go ahead and add this to the user library so i'm going to do that now, over here inside of the library, if I come down to the very bottom, go into my user library, I now have an inflatable boat. So, if I select my custom path, I can drag this boat down into here. And if I turn and look, now we have Diana driving the boat, which is awesome. So this is super helpful. And a couple other things that I want to point out. We're going to make this boat fly. Uh, so if you're doing an airplane, uh, this actually will help a lot with that. So in fact, let's go ahead and just grab an airplane. So we'll go into our vehicles and aircraft. Um, eeny, meeny, miny. Let's use a helicopter. Why not? So grab the helicopter. Now, if I want this to fly over the actual lake, um, I can go ahead and try and move these up. And you'll notice that it will just kind of actually attach to the ground plane, which is not what we want it to do. Instead, what we want to do is actually to follow this entire like path as it comes up. So this physics button way down here in the bottom right of this path, if I turn that on, you will notice now it will actually follow where the path is in space. So this can be super helpful for that. There are a couple other little things that are going on down here. Uh, we've already talked about speed um, and reverse I've got an animation, so how long do you want it to delay uh, before it actually gets going? Now it's just kind of running right now, so I don't have to worry about it. Um, you can actually rotate this object on the path as well. Um, and the other part is that we can actually tell it to follow along the direction of the path. So the forward direction on the object will follow along there. Um, and then we can have our animation loop. We can have a ping pong. We can make it go just once. So there are a couple extra options that are down here inside of this one. So. Those are all the pathing options here inside of Twinmotion 2022.1.2 as of this recording. If you've got any questions, of course, let me know.